Good morning and welcome to St. Christopher's Episcopal Church virtual service this morning. We thank you for joining us and if you know of anybody that might like to join that you know personally, please call them and tell them that we are on our Facebook page, St. Christopher's, here in Lubbock, Texas. Our opening hymn this morning will be 390 and that will be verses 1, 2, and 4 and enjoy the prelude please.
Good morning again. Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and with it to magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit, to think and do always things that are right, that we cannot exist without you. May you enable, may, <clears throat> may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob, Joseph, and, and his sons. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Billa and Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of the other children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to the pasture of their father's flock near Shechem and Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dotham. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to him, them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill one, our brother and conceal his blood? Come. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took him, they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
for this morning is a portion of Psalm 105. Let us read responsively by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land. And destroyed the supply of the earth. He said to man before them, they bruised his feet in fetters until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord touched him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of the people set him free. He set him as master over his household. As a ruler of all his possessions to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his children wisdom. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in the name of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life. Amen. Out on the rough sea. Well, the story you just heard read this morning is a story about Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee. Well, it's fairly well known among most Bible readers. And because three of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark and John all report this incident. But well, when we compare Matthew's story of Jesus and Peter walking on the water, the incident into this version as told by Mark and John have some noticeable variations in their stories compared to Matthew. First, only Matthew reports Peter getting out of the boat to walk towards Jesus on the water. And secondly, only Matthew tells that the waves were battering the boat. So let's examine Peter's side of the story, if you will. Lord, if it is you, Peter calls out. Well, when he and the other disciples Trolling across the Sea of Galilee, being battered by rough seas and winds. It's really remarkable. How in the world can they recognize this something walking towards them? This specter, if you will. A strange, familiar apparition. Oh my gosh! Could it be? Who is it? Who is it? Could, could it be, Lord? Is, is that you? Well, we really don't know. But what does Peter think of, of this? What is he trying to comprehend in all that's going on? Does he think this thing or ghost or whatever it might be is Jesus? Does he think it's a ghost, actually? Lord, if... Lord, if, 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 you know, many want to commend Peter for being the only one brave enough to get out of the boat and start walking towards Jesus while the other apostles just sit there 
kind of in awe of what was going on. But you know, this misses the point. Just why did Peter get out of the boat in the first place? Why would Peter even want to walk on the water? What is walking on the water for Peter supposed to prove? Well, you know, I think we can surf, safely assume that Jesus was trying to get from point A to point D, B as expeditiously as possible. But what was Peter trying to do? What was it that drove him to step out of the boat and onto rough water if such a thing were even possible? The love of the Lord, maybe? Or the desire to show himself to be some kind of spiritual back, black belt and have a desire to show the other apostles up? Did he think about all that in that short period of time that he had the point of today's gospel? The point of this story is not, look at brave Peter, at last taking a couple of steps were the only thing that he had thought about. Or would he have even thought about taking two steps? The point of this story is that Peter begins to sink because his faith is little and he doubts. Well, this really isn't a story about Peter and his courage or his faith or his foolhardiness. This is, of course, a story about Jesus, about God with us and the many ways in which he is actually with us day in and day out, minute. Jesus makes these disciples, most of whom are experienced sailors and navigators, very familiar with the sea they're getting ready to go out on, get in the boat by themselves and set out on the sea. Jesus, God willy, with, with us for some reason, left the disciples to deal with the wind and the waves and the mysterious chaotic sea on their own. Jesus stays behind to dismiss the crowd as the disciples set out across the sea by themselves. Well, we can say, okay, that's what he really wanted them to do. They'd crossed this sea before, haven't they? The waters were very familiar to them because they were all fishermen. So the disciples set forth and Jesus spends the remainder of his night upon the mountain praying. Well, the disciples today, and we can look at it this way, seemed very much alone, battering their way through the wind and the waves on familiar waters that have suddenly become hostile and deadly. But Jesus doesn't leave them for long, does he? For early in the morning, he makes his way to them. In the quickest, easiest way possible for a man perfectly at one with God by walking on the sea. The disciples see him and they're terrified. Jesus immediately reassures them using language similar to Yahweh's word to Moses. Jesus' actual words are not, it is I, but simply, I am. And then, he come, then comes Peter's adventure of walking on the water. Yes, we've really gone round and round about how Peter's actions did not seem such a great idea. But some of what he does when all is said and done really is worth imitating. In the first place, setting aside the if it is you part, he asks Jesus, if he can come and join him. He knows that he cannot do this without a word from his Lord. And Jesus, for his part, bids him come. He doesn't say anything like, Whoa, Peter, not a good idea. You're not ready for this. Why would you even want to walk on the water anyway? You've, you're already in the boat. You're safe. Jesus doesn't say anything like that. 
Jesus simply says one word, come. So Peter steps forth. He actually does take a couple of steps. And then he looks around. Yes, the waves are high, the seas are rough and strong, and suddenly he becomes aware of this crazy thing he's doing, something only God can do. He walks on the water. He doesn't call out to his friends in the boat, hey guys, look at me, I'm walking on the water. He doesn't say that at all. It's like he's no longer in the zone as some athletes put it. Being carried along in the moment by such instincts as gifts and graces that he may have. He becomes self-aware. And in that way, if quite normal, it isn't particularly helpful to him, is it? Never mind, I am. I hear, here I am. Solomon, the lonely fisherman, is walking on the water and he begins to sink. And he says, Lord, save me. He cries out. And Jesus, being Jesus, being after all God with us, reaches out his hand, takes Peter's hand, and they both step in the boat. My friends, if we are to get the full benefit of this passage, passage of Scripture, we need to understand that it is not and see it and receive it for what it is. This is not a newspaper account of an incident on the Sea of Galilee in which it is reported to us that Jesus truly walked on the water. Really and actually, he did it according not to the newspaper, but to the gospel. And that Peter, because of his faith, was pretty strong, was able to Im imitate Christ also walking on the water. But only for a couple of steps, because his faith, while pretty strong, was not really strong as it should have been. No, this is not a newspaper about a miracle, and it's not a story about faith either, strong or otherwise. Disciples and apostles back then did not expect to be able to walk on water if their faith was strong enough any more than we do today. This is not a story about a boat on the Sea of Galilee over 2,000 years ago. This is a story about the church. This is the story about you and me. It's a story about us. Yes, this story is very symbolic. Jesus is God with us. The boat with the disciples in it, my friends, is the church as it sets out into the world forever and ever. This story, God with us, has left on us our own for reason that we are not able to explain or any detail that we can show at all. Jesus has decided to stay back with the crowd and some of whom may or may not be disciples. But he has set those among us this day who are here, not only in spirit, but in body. He has already won over those people and has the palm of his hand loose to let them go where they need to go on their own and to the other side. And then he goes up to the mountain to pray. He teaches us and he trusts us that much. He represents to us the God after all who created each one of us with free will, talents, gifts, and graces, and then sets us free to use them. And when Jesus has finished praying, he returns to us as quickly and as possible 
in a way that only God can come to each one of us. Across the water, scaling, skating along on the surface of our storm-tossed lives. There he is. I see him. Can you see him? You need to look close. He's there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified in the pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. God the Father, have the mercy on us. God the Son, have the mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have the mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have the mercy on us. Most merciful God, we come to you in this time of anxiety and uncertainty surrounding the outbreak of COVID-19. As the sorrows of our heart and mind increase, we beseech you to save us from all trouble and fear. Cast away all works of darkness. Be our rock, a castle, to keep us safe. For the Lord is our stronghold and sure defense, and he will be our savior. For all who have died, receive them into the arms of your mercy. Grant them eternal peace and surround those who mourn with your healing grace. Lord, hear our prayer. For those directly infected with the virus, help them recover in good health. Restore them in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. For those at high risk of infection, especially the elderly, those with underlying illnesses, the marginalized and the poor. Keep them healthy and free from all sickness. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in quarantine, 
the shut in and the infirm. Help them find peace. Keep them in good health and renew their mind and spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff. Protect them as they minister to the sick. Relieve all stress and provide them with the resources and space to meet the needs of all the infirm. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. For our first responders, guard them from all harm and grant them strength and courage as they respond to calls for help. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. For service industry workers and those forced to work as their communities stay shut down, keep them healthy. Bestow the resources to best care for themselves and their families and assure them in the times of financial and medical anxiety. For those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources, have mercy on them, alleviate any fear, and provide for them daily bread and wage. For the leaders of this nation and the world, help them make sound and safe decisions to best secure the future of our planet. The Lord hear our prayer. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, as schools begin to open, keep them healthy and in good spirit to learn. And for those parents who choose to keep their children at home, Guide them with patience and grace so that they may make the best judgments for a sound education. For all children and families who are hungry and may face the loss of a place to live. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all scientists and those working to find a cure, inspire them toward your truth and help them discover and disseminate a vaccine and a cure. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all media and journalists, protect them all from harm in their reporting and move them to be a vector of truth and certainty and never fear and panic. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all places of worship, embolden them to be beacons of hope and love and help us gather however and whenever we can, be it in person or online, to give you praise. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, help them to minister to their flock, fortify them to be faithful pastors, and to persevere in prayer, and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young, Spare them from harm and fear. Keep them a joyful sign of your love and light. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead, and give them the words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. Lord, hear our prayer. For calm amidst the storm, as the waves toss our boat, we wonder, do you not care? Remind us not to be afraid, that with you all things are possible, and even the wind and the sea obey you. Lord, hear our prayer. Stir up in us a spirit of compassion and tenacity for the time ahead. Amen. Move us to check on loved ones at high risk of infection. In our parish and our diocese, we remember and pay for, pray for Suzanne and Dot, for Don and Nancy, for Mark, Jennifer and Richard, for Judy and Jane, for Sophia, and for those who have died, Dolores and Sam. These are fear and anxiety that we may share our resources rather than hoard them, and extend a helping hand to those in need. Amen. Amen. Inspire us to share the good news of your love and hope. Amen. Amen. All this we ask 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, healer of the sick, ruler of the tempestuous sea, and Savior of the world. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask, ask in our ignorance, but as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Again, I thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning here at St. Christopher's. I ask that if you have any needs, please call the church office or you can call me and my number is listed in the church's directory or in the church Facebook. So if you need something, please don't hesitate to call. We're here to help and we'd love to do whatever we can to help you through this crazy time we're going through. Do we have any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with the great thanksgiving found on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice. For the whole world. On the night he was sent over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the first.